Hello and welcome to Good Morning Europe. It's Monday the 7th of February. I'm Andrea Bolitho and these are your top stories this hour. French President Emmanuel Macron heads to Russia for a meeting with President Vladimir Putin amid rising tensions between Moscow and the West. Pope Francis has made his first appearance as a talk show guest on Italian TV. A threat to the environment or a necessary infrastructure for gas supply to Europe. We're in Puglia in southern Italy, the first access point of the Trans-Adriatic Pipeline. All eyes will be on French President Emmanuel Macron as he meets with Russia's President Vladimir Putin on Monday. The meeting comes as tensions between Moscow and the West increase. Macron says his visit will centre on dialogue and de-escalation. It follows Russian troop build-up at the border of Ukraine with around 130,000 soldiers. Joint military exercises will also begin this week with its ally Belarus. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz will meet US President Joe Biden on Monday, followed by visits to Ukraine and Russia in a separate bid to reach a resolution. I'm not going there to have a coffee. It's about making real, tough, important policies. This is a critical situation. I think we must always be clear about what we are promising. But rightly so. This is about preventing a war in Europe. That's the serious matter, and that is what I owe to the citizens of our country, to whom I also feel responsible with regard to the European peace order and our allies. Schultz emphasized that the European NATO partners and the U.S. would closely coordinate their actions. He also referred to Germany's engagement with NATO and Ukraine with German troops in Lithuania. Preparing for a possible Russian invasion, members of Ukraine's National Corps hold military training for volunteers in snow-covered Kiev. As Moscow continues to amass troops along state lines, willing residents from across the country join the far-right political party for training on a daily basis. Many fear for their lives and want to learn how to defend themselves. A hundred kilometers from the Russian border in the icy forests of Estonia, extreme temperatures are putting NATO troops to the test. Some 1,400 British, French and Estonian soldiers have joined the annual winter camp exercise near Tapa, where they're working together to perfect their tactical skills in a demanding winter environment. Meanwhile, 1,700 top U.S. troops have landed in southeastern Poland on President Joe Biden's orders. The country, which is a NATO member, shares borders with Russia and Ukraine. Biden will also deploy additional soldiers to Poland, Romania and Germany in a bid to demonstrate America's commitment to NATO's eastern flank. However, Russia's western military district are also conducting drills in the Leningrad region, bordering Finland and Estonia. While on Sunday, the Kremlin flew two long-range nuclear-capable bombers over Belarus, which borders Ukraine to the north. At least 10 people are now feared dead in Madagascar after cyclone Batsire made landfall on the east coast. Whole villages are reported to have been swept away, leaving an estimated 50,000 people displaced. It's the second destructive storm to hit the island in two weeks, with gusts of more than 230 kilometers an hour. Um, people that they were in the shelters uh, the shelters have been damaged themselves, so they they had they returned home this morning to try to see if they were you know to recover whatever remained of their houses and to find maybe another shelter. But uh, there have been damages in the shelters themselves. Some towns have had no electricity for two days, and the water supply has been disrupted, according to local media. Even schools and churches, normally used as evacuation centres, have had their roofs torn off. Experts say that extreme weather events like cyclones will become more frequent because of climate change. Hundreds marched in the Spanish capital on Sunday to protest against COVID-19 restrictions. The participants largely fell into two different groups, people against vaccination and those asking for more freedom to face the pandemic without government measures. 
The march ended in front of the parliament where crowds listened to songs and speeches. In the Netherlands, there was a similar sight in Rotterdam. Thousands were also out protesting COVID-19 government restrictions with the Together for the Netherlands movement. But unlike some previous gatherings in the city, Sunday's was peaceful. Many of the protesters said that they weren't against vaccination, just that they wanted things to go back to normal. And in Canada, protests against pandemic restrictions across the country entered their second week. What initially started as anger about vaccine requirements for truck drivers has now turned into larger concerns about health measures. Pope Francis has notched up a new first. He's appeared on an Italian TV chat show. Francis spoke on a wide range of subjects, from the plight of migrants and how they should be helped, to his own love of classical music and his few personal friendships. When asked specifically about the role of being Pope, he downplayed any suggestion that it was a burden. If you go around and you see so many people who endure bad things, Day by day, for example, people who endure family and economic difficulties and wages do not last until the end of the month. And then, of course, there is the suffering with the pandemic. Then I think I would not be honest if I said that I endure very much. The TV show Che Tempo Che Far is one of the most popular and critically acclaimed primetime shows in Italy. Normally, Catholics are more used to seeing Pope Francis formally delivering weekly remarks in St. Peter's Square. On Sunday, however, an audience of millions tuned in to see a more personal side to the pontiff. Queen Elizabeth II has officially become the longest-serving British monarch. Having reigned for seven decades, the 95-year-old was kept busy earlier this week, reviewing plans for her Platinum Jubilee celebrations in June. The Queen also marked the occasion, announcing her sincere wish for Camilla, the wife of her heir Prince Charles, to be crowned Queen Consort when the time comes, a statement that has generated mixed reactions from the public. So we maybe need a bit of a change now. We need to start to move on with the royal family. Uh, I think a change... This may be hopefully a good thing for us. Uh, the Queen is going to step down at some point, uh, and probably this year is maybe, maybe a, um, a good time to do it, a suitable time. I'm delighted. I think it's high time that she made that decision. I'm delighted that she did. And we have to move on with the times. It's, it's way past worrying about the past. We've got to, we've got to go with what's right. And if no, anybody else, no, if anybody should know what the right thing to do is, she is. While the monarch renewed her lifelong pledge to continue her service, she urged the British people to give her son and Camilla the same support they have given her. The Duchess of Cornwall, now 74, was long vilified for her role in the breakup of Charles's marriage to the late Princess Diana. Senegal fans celebrate at home in Dakar after their team defeated Egypt 4-2 on penalties at the Africa Cup of Nations final in Cameroon. It's the first time they've ever taken the title. After extra time ended, still with no score, it went to the drama of penalties. Hero Sadio Mane made up for a first half penalty miss by converting the winning spot kick in the shootout. The match had been billed as a battle between Liverpool stars Mane of Senegal and Mohamed Salah of Egypt, but it never reached those heights, with both sides missing chances. While Senegal celebrate and Mane is voted the tournament's best player, an exhausted Egypt will return home after missing out on their bid to win a record-extending eighth African title. Still to come on Good Morning Europe, more news, sport and entertainment stories from Europe and around the world. Stay with us.